Hello space engineers, and welcome to a large hole in the ground. I decided to start this video here. It's kind of a display of how much you need to dig out to start to build something. Like what you see there in the background. And yes, that goes up a long ways. So let's get over there and show you what I have done. Sorry if things are a bit sloppy. see my little bit of a hab module there as well as some production what's harder to see is that large hole in the ground well just lost my connector Deal with that real quick. Hmm. Don't have any components in there. to that. This is my space elevator I have done. It's not very big in section, but space engineers, if you want to keep your PCU down, it kind of helps to build thin. Just a little bit of a look with my ab module. All of those Timers are just for the airlock, but it is fully automatic. All you can do is step up and wait. This back here is the production facility. It was originally wind powered, had a bunch of wind turbines, but for some reason they weren't putting out their full amount. It wasn't a spacing thing, it's just, well, the game being weird. I do have a hydrogen engine buried in all of that somewhere. This here is a little bit of a control center. Let's go ahead and pause that. But I'm using IQ Production Manager. I know Izzy's is popular and it works just fine. I put pick this one instead because, well, I'm weird. That is hooked up to, as you may have saw, there are five assemblers there with three of these refineries with no modules. Got a little bit of a miner up there and a lot of ore haulage. is what I use to bring all the ore back from the mine over there. And this little carriage can be a little sketchy. But it does get the job done. Turn on the batteries. Oh, and a pro tip when you're got something this big, Space Engineers wants to encompass the entire thing and the picture at once. 
So if you go to first person view when you're still connected to it, your perspective's gonna change. A lot. But let's get this thing moving. This will take a little bit. You can see that marker that is for the bottom of my climber or the printer head for this. And I'll probably just cut the camera here and come back when we get towards the top. We are now starting to get closer to the top within a few kilometers. I'm trying to make something that will go up and down a tower smoothly when Space Engineers is not easy and as you can see this one's not exactly smooth. But it does get the job done. Here we are, getting closer to the top. It's kind of hard to get a good view. But this thing thankfully stops pretty quick. Let's get out here and take a look. This is what has been, it stopped right now, but this is what has been building this tower. These four panels up here are enough to power it. At least this part of it, not the production down at the bottom, but this will power just the printer itself. It does have a battery and of course connects to the tower, which is connects to the rest of it, so it's not really necessary, but I don't have, don't have to worry about this thing running out of power at least. And there is a period in its cycle where it is disconnected completely from the rest of the base. But this design is based on something I saw Dragon Nation Gaming make. He was using it to bore into a mountain. But I did some modifications, some few things different. And I went up with it. Let's get down there and get this thing going and let you watch it work for a bit. I don't have just a button. I need a button up here to start it. It is a touch clangy. But it does do it. This was made and started at least before they had to reinforce conveyor tubes. But these are cheaper to build anyways, and when you're building this big, you don't want to waste resources. As you can see, I could probably increase the speed a bit. The welders are 
fast enough, and these are just vanilla welders, are fast enough that I could probably go faster, but my production was having problems keeping up. Let's go through a cycle here. After it goes up to the top, we disconnect everything from the bottom. The grinders turn on, and right now it is disconnected from the base. Just these four mag plates are the only thing holding it up right now. And the grinders on each side take those down, and those materials, of course, get recycled to build the others. once it gets to the top of the stroke we connect back up and do the merge blocks first and those are separate then you'll notice those go in then my projector which is over there turns on welders turn on and we lift everything up Once again, my bag plates go in and lock, and that's where the cycle starts all over. The whole thing is controlled by... Ouch. Don't run into that. These eight timers. You notice I've got one off that's part of the safety. Is controlled by those eight timers, and I've got a pair of sensors. I've got one there. I've got another one over here between these two blocks. In addition to that, I've got three safety sensors. So that if there's nothing there for it to connect to, it's not going to try to lock in. It'll. That's why it's turning off that one timer. Keep this thing from falling down. 19 plus kilometers to the ground and well it probably wouldn't make it there before my computer crashed instead I'll wait for the next cycle I don't like moving my carriage up and down this thing with it moving. I don't trust Clang not to show up and pay me a visit. Because when you get something like this, it can be cause issues that you're not expecting. list isn't very organized there. Let's get back down to the ground. And this thing won't just fall down. I've actually had this thing reverse and move upwards against gravity. But if you go ahead and turn your power all the way up, it'll get a move on. Be back as we get closer.
here we are approaching the ground again. See if we've got what we need to fix this real quick. thought I would take a little time and show you where I'm at on this. Those that'd be interested in it. While I'm here and thinking about it, in case people are wondering, that's the info. This is just the tower in that. There's your PCU. So those that are planning on something like this can have an idea of how much it takes. And this is just a fairly small cross-section one, so if you go bigger, that's of course going to give you even more PCU. Thank you once again for taking the time to watch. I know it wasn't much of a video and probably somewhat boring, but give you an idea what is needed to build a space elevator. <laughs>